talk for the uh, interdisciplinary colloquium series at the Capit Center. It's a very exciting occasion. Um, Dr. Luis Moreno Armella is a senior executive research associate of the Capit Center and a professor in the mathematics department uh, at our university here. Uh, before I hand over to Lewis, I just wanted to um, give a short uh, background of uh, his interests and uh, which lead into his uh, talk today. Dr. Moreno is a leading figure in mathematics education known around the world uh, for his work. He's a PhD in mathematics on geometric version of the reciprocal Whitney spectral synthesis theorem. Um, his research over the past 30 years has been focused mainly in mathematics education. His present research work is in dynamic media with the goal to develop students' understanding of basic mathematical ideas. His work has involved the professional development of teachers at different levels of the national educational system in Mexico and Colombia. He was an international advisor to the Ministry of Education of Colombia from 1999 to 2004 and designed there a project to develop a digital infrastructure for the teaching of mathematics at the secondary school level. In Mexico, Dr. Moreno has worked with Dr. Teresa Rojana as principal investigators in a group project funded by CONACYT, the National Council of Science and Technology, to research and develop a strategy to implement digital technologies at secondary schools all over Mexico. His work with teachers and students has allowed him to supervise 20 master degree theses and eight, eight PhD theses in mathematics education. And he has been a consultant and advisor to the projects uh, here at UMass Dartmouth prior to the Capit Center existing uh, for over 10 years. Uh, Dr. Moreno has had a huge impact on education in Mexico and he has brought the, his talents and experience uh, here to the Capit Center in helping uh, develop and evolve the, uh, the, uh, the center over the past year. His other research interests which are linked to uh, dynamic media include the executability and the co-action of semiotic systems of representations. Uh, and this is partly the focus of Dr. Moreno's talk today. And with that, I uh, warmly uh, introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Moreno. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I, I must say that I am and I feel pleased and honored to be here today with you. Honor for a good and obvious reason. Pleased because I have seen the Capital Center to become a reality. Um, said this, I would like to begin the. Sorry, I'm black. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> this is the technological blue. <laughs> the one I have here. Um, I will talk. Uh, Give you some, I share with you some ideas from uh, this theme that has been uh, um, infrastructural to our research in the last years. Uh, symbolic cognition, digital environment, and I want to take today a long-term perspective. That means uh, uh, we will begin asking the question about how the human, about all the path that the human brain has taken and has traveled to a long way to become symbolic. This is something that uh, is easily forgotten when you take uh, just a contemporary viewpoint and sometimes uh, some problems cannot be well understood or deeply understood if one just stay with the results of the process. I think it is a basic epistemological principle to state that uh, the reality, uh, the knowledge of any reality needs to be explored 
in a diachronic and synchronic uh, scales, not just uh, the synchronic scales. Um, before, before the, the stage of becoming symbolic, we have to say that the basic animal awareness intuits the mysteries of the world, allowing the universe to carve out its own image in the mind. This is a very nice way of expressing the idea, and this is uh, almost verbatim a sentence taken from Merlin Donald's book, one of the books I, I always take with me, even when I come to a lecture, this one. This is, um, uh, what are we talking about when we say to curve out its own image in the mind? We are talking about something that sometimes we call that is wired in the nervous system. And we can have some examples of this. For example, we can have wired intentionality in a nervous system. You see, look carefully at this image. This is, there is intentionality there. Sometimes we, hear, we hear, hear people say that intentionality just comes after the language or culture, but I can see, and you can see intentionality there. And, uh, and it is wired. This is the kind of thing that precedes the stage of the symbolic level. It is already in, an, in the nervous system, even in ours. But somewhere, sometime in evolution, the evolving nervous system must have acquired the mechanism needed for symbolic thinking without leaving or ret while retaining its original implicit base, analog base, what we call wired as in the previous example. So, we are, the nervous system, the evolution was building on this base, on this base. And uh, understanding this is precisely the, his, the story of our own evolutionary adventure. And the question is, how did it begin? How we could go beyond this wire, this implicit, knowledge system? And the answer to this is, of course, very complex, but uh, trying to make a long story short, we could say, we would say that um, it begins with a, with a conscious control of body movement. This is where we make a difference, conscious control of body movement. Why? Why is this? Because this gives us the possibility of developing some skills like cutting, throwing, manufacturing tools. This comes, this comes uh, hand in hand with the acquisition of voluntary memory that allows you to retain mentally the process of building a tool. And the process of building a tool becomes a template, becomes like a, a kind of algorithm you can retain, you can retain, and then you can execute later. You can execute later. So, and this allows also the possibility of establishing communities around common goals. For example, hunting, building tools. And sometimes you can find uh, ex and you can find example of these tools, for example, all, all around the world in prehistory, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia. And that means that these templates you can take with you were working really in all these, uh, in all these migrations. This constitutes for us what we call the level zero of symbolic culture. Because a tool can be seen, can be conceived of as a symbolic culture. I will explain this later. Our deepest cultural roots lie in collective action and mimetic thought. Mimetic thought is all this way of conceiving social activities through the possibility of communication 
communicating through the gestures, through uh, 